Hi, and welcome to Love and the Planets, our special edition on the lunar eclipse on January 21st. I'm Armand Diaz on Long Island. And I am Margaret Gray in Dublin, Ireland. Well, we've got an eclipse coming up, and I think this is going to be a very charged time. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. We'll get to it at the end and talk about the specifics. But I think that this is a, an, I mean, any lunar eclipse is always kind of a little over the top and a little bit nuts. This one, I think, is really, really charged. Well, I think the thing about eclipses is, I mean, this is a full moon eclipse, of course, because it's a lunar eclipse. So imagine all the energies of the full moon, which is all our emotions come up or a lot of our emotions come up from our, from our unconscious. And really, usually with the full moon, we can feel them, we can see them, and we can feel pulled and pushed. But in this situation, our emotions are obscured, so we can still feel them, but we don't really know what they're about. So it can really throw us a little bit and pretend particularly with relationships, because of course, it's so easy to get a little paranoid during these lunar eclipses and think it's all about the other person or something's going on that we can't see, because there is a lot that's going on that we can't see, but what's going on is really within us rather than the other person. So to be very careful not to blame the other person. I would say it's important not to blame the other person, although, you know, you can't really trust them either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, we have we have a few things that are that are definitely leaning towards maybe fantasy. And, you know, fantasy when it's good is good. But when it's not so good, it can really actually lend itself towards paranoia. And that's uh, that's that's kind of a bit of a problem. You know, you're never quite sure which way it's going to go. And you're not sure it's realistic either way. Yes, yeah, so it's good to wait for those kind of um, kind of tensions to ease a little bit until after the lunar eclipse to make any decisions. Now, one of the things I would say about this eclipse is that it feels like it's really about integrating heart and mind. And, you know, it's that right and left brain. And it's also between that pull and push between who we are as individuals and who we are as part of a collective and what we want for ourselves as individuals and what we want in terms of our contribution our participation in society. So I think that's kind of the main tension that is, you know, playing out with this eclipse. What do you think, Armand? I, I think when we look at it that way, the fact that it is a lunar eclipse in Leo, uh, heart, you want to come from the heart, and yet you're not quite sure what that is. It, it's almost it's almost like a little bit of a shell game, you know. You, you know, you know what you know what you sort of should be doing, but you, you can't quite figure out how to do it. And I think we're also feeling we are in energies of change at the moment. This has been going on the past week, and it's certainly a part of this eclipse, that we can feel that we need to make some changes. But again, because it's, our feelings are so obscured, it's not easy to see what those changes are. And I think we're all creatures of habit, aren't we? And particularly in the area of relationship, when we feel that there are changes happening, we can sometimes kind of try to dig our heels in and say, I don't want anything to change. But to remember that change can also be exciting and it's kind of like refreshing a little bit like opening a door and letting some air in well it's always the big challenge in relationship isn't it I mean, because only change and movement is exciting and enervating and feels good and that's where the excitement is that's where the romance is but that's where security isn't and so you know you've, you've got that sort of well you can have the security but then you got to keep everything just exactly where it is and then it starts to lose the life out of it but I think that this eclipse will enliven things. We've had a very enlivening week, actually. I think there's been a, there's been a big pull and push this week between responsibility and obligation on the one hand and sort of doing our own thing and following our heart on the other. And I think that it really kind of comes to a head, maybe a slightly different flavor, but at this eclipse. Absolutely. And if you haven't, you know, if you haven't really followed our blogs, do go to our Facebook page and have a look at our blogs there because we post on a daily basis. So we've kind of been building up really to this eclipse. Now, I think something to keep in mind, which is so important for relationships, is the whole issue of communication. And I think communication may not feel so easy today with this eclipse because we're processing a lot. So we may need to take a little bit of space for ourselves in relationships. And keep in mind that this, since this is an eclipse that, you know, is in Leo, which is the element of fire, it's always good to kind of light a candle or, you know, light a fire if you're in a cold country 
country, just to connect with those energies. Because deep underneath, there's actually quite a lot of heart healing going on. But sometimes when there is healing going on, we really need to kind of take extra care of ourselves and really kind of nurture ourselves and go back to, you know, those self-soothing, nurturing skills that we have. And I would say after a couple of days, I would think as we pull away from the eclipse, as we get into Monday and Tuesday, there are some things that are going to really be helping us to make a better time of it. And, you know, I think, I think, you know, just on a very practical level, the weekend may have a lot of tension around it. I mean, you could have some fun. It could be great. But I mean, you know, there might also be a little bit of hesitation and a little bit of fears and some anxieties around. And I think it smooths out as we get into the week. I mean, always really as a general rule, um, you know, full moons are not the best time to probably start something new, to start a new relationship. Um, so just to keep that in mind, because, you know, as we said, it, there's a lot of emotional tensions around. So just additional self-care. So looking at the astrology of it all, what do you think is key for this eclipse astrologically, um, Armand? Well, I, we have Venus square Neptune right beforehand, and that's, that's the illusions, the fantasy, the paranoia. Uh, and then we have Mars square Saturn afterwards. And that, and that just adds tension. That's driving with the parking brake on. You know, you, you want to go forward and you're being held back. And the changes we've been talking about are, of course, this sun square Uranus, which, you know, is incredibly um, full of tension because it kind of, it means that it really amplifies the energy we've already been in for weeks, which is Uranus squaring the nodes. So there's something, there's that feeling of almost fatedness about it, which, you know, as, as, humans with free will, we like to think we have control over our destiny. And when the nodes come into play, it makes us question that. Do we really have free will? How much is fated? How much is not fated? So I think that creates a little bit of tension. Not to mention, of course, also it's trining Chiron. So when Chiron comes into the picture, there's the integration, sometimes a little bit of pain, which comes with healing, of course, as well. Yeah, I, I think that one thing, you know, that, that sense of fadedness is likely to be very strong. And with Uranus square the sun and then coming this, the, the full moon lunar eclipse, uh, sometimes we, we can feel that we don't have control and power. We can act precipitously. We can just do something just to show that we're in control. You know, I mean, it can be like, you know, okay, you know, like I'm breaking up or something, just to show, just to show that you can do something. And that's what you want to avoid. You want to avoid that kind of just so that you, just, just to show that you can type of action. That's really important with that Uranus, I think, and particularly because the sun is also next to Mercury, it's conjunct Mercury, and so we may blurt something like that out, even though it's a Mercury in Capricorn, but it's a sun in Aquarius, so we may just suddenly have a reaction. So, so those are the astrological kind of energies that are going around, and um, we hope you have a wonderful lunar eclipse if you're somewhere where it's nighttime or early morning, like we are in Ireland, and I believe you are in New York, Armand. Mm -hmm. We will hopefully get to see see the lunar eclipse, which is quite a sight, really. It's a full lunar eclipse. And of course, it all depends on cloud cover. So hopefully the clouds will blow away and we'll all get to see such an amazing spectacle. Be aware, though, that if you're watching it, you're going to feel the energies more strongly. So if you're feeling a little vulnerable and on 100%, it may not be the best thing for you. But, you know, just to keep that in mind. Yeah, I, I'm going to go out and watch it at midnight. Uh, you'd have to get up at like five in the morning. So well, you, you'll report back on yes. and tell us how it was. Of course I will, absolutely, because I'm such an early morning person, as you know well, Armand. <laughs> so we'll see you all um, in a couple of weeks for the next new moon. Take care, Armand. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.